Question 6a. Describe what it means by racemic mixture. A mixture containing equal amounts of each optical isomer. So what is optical isomer? Optical isomer is uh, the mirror images which they are non-superimpossible. Normally, we will give uh, this um, optical isomer uh, as the positive and negative isomer or DL isomer if this isomer they have 50 50 percent means their ratio is 50 to 50 so we say that this mixture of the isomer is the racemic mixture that's the meaning of racemic mixture when these two isomer they are 50 50. part b Asparagine is a more amino acid that contains chirocarbon. Okay, this is a chirocarbon. And display stereoisomerism, so it's optical isomers. Separate samples of asparagine is dissolved in CDCL3 and analyzed using carbon 13 and proton NMR. Predict the number of peaks seen in the carbon 13 and proton animal uh, of uh, asparagine this one uh, actually is better to mention uh, numbers of signals than peaks because in proton animal one signal sometimes it will produce a few peaks but it's okay uh, we just follow the question what this uh, needs let's start with proton animal so we need to identify how many types of protons present in this molecule. So it has one, two, three, four, five. So it's, uh, it has uh, five different protons in the molecule. So therefore, you produce five signals. For the carbon, so it has uh, one, two, three, four different carbon. So therefore, it's going to generate four signals in the carbon enamel. Part C, the isoelectric point of Asparagine, uh, short form ASN, is the at pH 5.4. Part 1. Describe the meaning of the terms isoelectric point. Okay, so this one is uh, very easy. So it's the pH at which amino acid exists as the jitter ion. Jitter ion is a dipolar ion which formed by the amino acid means if let's say we have uh, this uh, amino acid when it's formed this jitter ion means this hydrogen will gains by the amines to form ammonium and this part this carboxylic acid will form carboxylic ion so it will form dipolar ion and we call jitter ion So therefore, uh, here. Okay, this is the uh, these uh, the the meanings, and draw the structure of this ASN at pH one. Uh, so we need to compare the pH now, because the isoelectric point is five point four, and the pH one is relatively lower than five point four, means the ASN is going to uh, be under acidic condition when this ASN under acidic condition so we know that is more H plus and the amine group 
therefore will react with the H plus. So when the amine group react with H plus, then it will form ammonium. So for this uh, ASN, this uh, amino acid, when it's under this pH, so it will just form ammonium here. Means this ASN, it will form ammonium here. This one will gain the protons to form ammonium. Okay, remember, this one is uh, amide. Amide group, this nitrogen, it's a non-basic nitrogen. It will not gain proton. It will not form ammonium. So therefore, when it's pH 1, uh, it just this part will form ammonium. This part stay the same. Part D. ASN can polymerize to form this poly ASN. Draw the structure of the poly ASN showing two repeat units. The peptide linkage should be displayed. So it means display like this. Uh, before you draw this dipeptide, uh, make sure you uh, arrange the molecule and put the amine and carboxylic acid on the left and right hand side. Therefore, they can uh, react with the others group. Okay, let's say you draw like this. Uh, this is a side chain, the side chain of the amino acid, and this is the difunctional group of the amino acid. So the condensation will happen between the carboxylic acid and the amine. So basically, it's here. So it's undergo condensation. So the CN bonds will form to form means the amide bonds will form. Okay. After, after that, here also will do the same. It will remove uh, one H and this one will remove OH. So eventually it will form this uh, polymer chain. And this is the uh, two repeat units. Uh, because this uh, uh, polymer is uh, just from one monomer, therefore, what you need to show is one repeat unit and two repeat unit. So these are the two repeat unit okay, from this uh, this ASN, this uh, uh, this amino acid. Right, so you just draw the repeat units with uh, sorry this uh, polymer chain with two repeat unit again one two for part E the iso electric point of the lysine is uh, at uh, pH nine point eight. A mixture of dipeptide, LYS, okay, means the lysine, and uh, this uh, asparagine, so LYS, ASN, and its two constituents amino acid, so the ASN and the lysine here, is analyzed by electrophoresis, and the buffer now is 5, means pH 5. The result obtained are shown in this figure 6.3. Let's look at the lysine and the, this uh, dipeptide and the ASN. So because the pH that used is 5.0 and the iso electric point for this lysine is uh, 9.8. So means the buffer is relatively acidic compared to the isoelectric point of this lysine. Means when this amino acid in this pH 5, so the amine groups here will react with H plus 
and form ammonium. Means this lysine will form two positive ion. For the ASN here, because the isoelectric point for this ASN is just 5.4 and the buffer is uh, 5. So means the buffer is actually slightly acidic compared to this isoelectric point. Means the amine group here will not really form many ammonium. So means it's like almost uncharged uh, for this uh, ASN under this buffer. That's why uh, this ASN will be the spot E. So it just moves a little bit because it will not really form uh, many charge positive or many ammonium. For the this uh, dipeptide, because it's the the dipeptide that formed by these two amino acids. So therefore, the isoelectric point we kind of expect is in between. Means is somehow is still higher than pH 5. Means the amine group in this dipeptide, this one and this one, is still will react with the H plus to form ammonium, ammonium. Means the dipeptide also will form two positive under this pH 5. And now which one is larger? Of course, dipep dipeptide is much larger, is move slower. And this lysine is uh, smaller, move faster. That's why the spot F is for the dipeptide, the G is for the lysine. Therefore, we have this answer. Again, the spot E is the ASN, F is the dipeptide, okay, G is the LYS. So this is the reason I already explained to you just now. So the dipeptide, uh, actually, uh, okay, another one, the LYS, and the dipeptide, they are positively charged, and the ASN is nearly uncharged, just slightly positive, and the, this dipeptide is larger than the lysine, that's why it moves slower. Part F. Thin layer and gas liquid chromatography can be used to analyze a mixture of substance. Each type of chromatography makes use of stationary phase and mobile phase. Part 1. Complete table 6.1 with an example of each of this. For the thin layer chromatography, stationary phase, normally we will use a solid support. The solid support is a, normally is a glass plate, something like this, is it here? We use a glass plate and we will coat a layer of aluminum oxide or silicon dioxide on the glass plate. So you see the white color here? So this is the oxide. Yeah, that's why this layer of oxide will use as the stationary phase for the separation. Okay, for the gas liquid chromatography, uh, this one because it's a gas, so the mobile phase is the gas that we use and the gas, it, can, it must be uh, inert, it cannot react with the reactant. That's why we use the inert gas such as nitrogen and helium. Argon also can. Part 2. An amino acid is analyzed. 
using thin layer chromatography, two chromatograms of unknown amino acid, and four reference amino acid PQRS are obtained using two different solvents. So from here, we actually uh, know that okay, because PQRS is a reference and this reference uh, sample run together with this unknown amino acid, unknown amino acid, same acid, and two different solvents. So from here, it's quite clear that the, this unknown amino acid is S. Because in the first solvent, you can see the distance here is same as the, this uh, uh, sample S. When we use this uh, second solvent, the distance of this unknown amino acid also same as this compound S. So we are quite sure that unknown, unknown amino acid is actually this one, the S. So very easy, uh, identify the unknown amino acid and justify your answer. The unknown amino acid is S, why? Because the retention factor is the same for both amino acid in both solvent. So means uh, when we calculate using this solvent front, uh, solvent front is this one uh, here, about 5 cm. So we use the distance that travel by the spot over the, this uh, 5 cm. So we get the RF value. So basically, they will get uh, there will be the same RF value for this uh, unknown uh, amino acid and the compound S. Part G, we have uh, this uh, chromatogram, uh, partial chromatogram from the gas chromatography. Um, and the mass spectrometry. The gas chromatogram is shown here. Okay, we have three compounds, J, K, L. And the area of J, K, L okay, is uh, in this table. So now, the area under each peg is proportional to the uh, mass of respective compound in the mixture. Uh, the concentration of K in the mixture is this one 5.52 times 10 power of negative 2 gram per dm cube so therefore using this uh, these values or this concentration calculate the concentration in mole per dm cube of l so you have to do a conversions later uh, first calculate the concentration of L in gram per dm cube first. So we just use the ratio between them because uh, 44 mm square will give this this concentration. So 58 must give the larger one. So larger by how much? So we just use this ratio, 58 over 44 times the concentration of K. So we'll get the larger concentration, which is 7.28 times 10 power of negative 2. If you don't know what I'm uh, trying to tell you now, you can do the cross multiply. Okay, let's say uh, 44 form this concentration, therefore 58 form what? Right, form X or what? Okay, so once you get this one, then you have to convert this one to mole. Uh, so divide this one, the gram over the molar mass, so you get the mole. Molar mass is 116 uh, already given here. So therefore, you get 6.27 times 10 power negative 4 mole per dm cube. Okay, that's all. Thank you.